All right, woo! Uh, we are going to be beginning. This feels so weird because most everyone is outside. Hello to the 10 of you that are currently sitting down. Everyone who is outside, please make your way in. We're gonna be starting. All righty, well, for those of you who are sitting, go ahead and stand for me. Deceived ya. We are going to be going into a time of worship. Come on, guys, take your seats, take your seats. Just kidding, stand in front of a chair. Don't sit down just yet, we're gonna worship. All righty, guys, well, I am Erin. I'm so excited to have you all here with us tonight, but more than that, I am so excited to worship with you all. We have an amazing, wonderful set of worship prepared for you. But more than that, we have a God who is just so deserving of our love. So I just want to encourage all of you in this space, all of you who are currently walking in, whatever it is that you may have walked in here with that could distract you, that could keep you from focusing on God, whether it's uh, anxiety, whether it's school, whether it's work, whatever that is, just leave that at the door because we are about to go into a time of worship and we are about to worship a God who is so worthy of all of the praise that we are going to sing to him. He deserves it all. And so I just want to encourage you guys to focus on him. Focus on the things that he has done for you, on the things that he has given you. If you're like, he hasn't given me everything, you're alive today and you did not need to be alive. So thank God for that. I am so excited to have you all here. So I'm just going to pray and then we're just going to worship God. So dear Lord, thank you for your goodness, for your kindness. I thank you for the love and the desire that you have for each of us here, Lord. You planned so that we could be here to interact with you, to grow closer to you, Lord. And so I just pray in this space right now, whatever it is that we walked in here with, whatever it is that we may feel distracted by, that we would just set that aside because that is not important compared to you, Lord. You are the best thing in our life. You are the most valuable thing in our life. And so just help us to take this moment to honor you and glorify you and give you the worship that we know you deserve. You give to us so, so generously, Lord. We deserve none of it, and yet you give to us freely. Thank you for the fact that we woke up this morning. Thank you for the bed that we slept in, for the food that we ate, for however we got here, for our family, for our friends, Lord. Thank you for those things that we forget to thank you for. Help us to glorify and honor you in this moment, God. You are worthy. Holy, holy, holy is your name, God. So I just pray that we would worship you right now, that you would feel the love that we have for you, God. Help us to not be distracted. Help us to be unfocused. Help us to be focused in our worship of you right now, Lord. Let your spirit flood this place. We want to experience your presence, God. I pray that all in your name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together, yeah?
God, we're just so thankful that we get to rely on you, that we get to remind ourselves that you are our firm foundation. You are the one that we can run to. You are the one that we get to build our house on. Father, you are the one that is holding us up, that we don't have to hold ourselves up. God, we're just so thankful for your strength, for how reliable you are, God, that we just get to put our trust and our faith in you. God, we're just so thankful for who you are, our safety and our comfort. God, I pray that as we sing this next song, God, that we would lean into you, God, that we would rest in your arms. We would allow your peace, your rest, your comfort, your grace to wash over us.
Jesus, we thank you for this time of worship, a time where we can just enter into your presence, a time where we can find rest for our souls and surrender everything at your feet, Lord. Thank you that regardless of where we are, we know that we can come to you and you welcome us with open arms, not because of who we are, but because of the love that you have for each and every one of us. Remind us of that love that you have, a love that only you possess and that can only come from you. Fill us with the joy and the peace that comes with following you and help us to be vessels of those things to those around us, Lord. I thank you for awakening. I thank you for every person in this room. I thank you for this time of worship. May you get the honor, the glory, and the praise. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. You guys can go ahead and take your seats. My name is Nick, and it's time for a little Nick at Night. I, uh, thank you, thank you. I got a couple of announcements for you guys tonight. Starting with tonight, after the gathering, we'll be heading out to Ampersand to get some ice cream. You know, it's summertime, it's getting a little warm, so we're mixing things up a little bit. Ampersand, after the gathering. Next week, we'll be playing basketball in the PC gym, so bring your sho shoes if you're trying to play. Uh, coming up in two weeks, we actually will be having another I Love My City Serve Day. With uh, Paraclete Church, we'll be having a block party, uh, having some good food, hanging out with some kids, having a good time. So if you want to sign up for that, that's going to be in two weeks. You can do so uh, in our Instagram bio. So make sure you sign up for that. You're not going to want to miss it. Speaking of something else that's coming up, can you guys believe it's already June? Today is June 1st. Wow, that's crazy. So I have been told that there are actually five Thursdays this month. And so for those of you who don't know, here at Awakening, we like to celebrate when we have five Thursdays in a month. We call it Fifth Thursday. And so I, I know a little bit of information. I can't tell you a lot. I just want to know, want you guys to know, you're not going to miss it. Make sure you're there. It's a time of celebration. It's a time of fun. We usually have good food. So be there. Fifth Thursday, it's going to be the end of June. You're not going to want to miss out. Uh, one of my favorite things here about Awakening is that we all get to sit together in community. And what if I told you guys we actually get to do that on another day of the week? Sunday mornings at the 11 o'clock gathering in the main auditorium, we like to sit together. If you walk into the auditorium, we will be on the far left. And we would love for you to join us if you don't do so already. You know, life is better in community, and we want you guys to sit with us if you don't, excuse me, if you don't already do so. Uh, and the last announcement I have for you guys is uh, if you're not already doing so, follow us on social media at Instagram, at Awakening underscore Fresno, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. I almost forgot, thank you to the people in the back. Wow, I forgot the most important announcement. Wow, how could I do that? So we, I wanna take a, moment, a minute uh, a minute to honor and recognize some very important people in the room tonight. These are our VIPs, and you are a VIP here at Awakening if it is your very first time. So if that's you, could you just do us a favor and raise your hand? We would love to connect with you. We even have a free gift for you. So if you're a new person, please, can you just raise your hand? We got one up here at the front. Wow, welcome, guys. Welcome to Awakening. We are so glad. Yeah, let's get up for our VIPs. Thank you guys for joining us. We are so glad you are here tonight. So right now, that's all the announcements I have for you guys. So we're going to go into our time of community. So VIPs, you can take that card you just got, head on back to the info table and exchange that card for a gift and connect with one of our volunteers. We'd love to meet with you. Say hi. Uh, for everyone else, though, I want you guys to stand on up. Stand up. You guys could go ahead and get a snack, talk to your friends, talk to someone you don't know, and ask them this question that I just came up with. What is the best gift that you've ever received? Ooh, it could be a birthday gift, a graduation gift, a Christmas gift. I don't know. What's the best gift you've ever received? Go ahead and tell everyone.
Hello, hello. Welcome, friends. Happy Thursday. It is great to be here with you all. Sorry, I, you know, Olivia and I were so bummed we had to miss last week. Then again, like we were on our honeymoon, which was great. Um, and we had a phenomenal time in Pismo Beach, eating terrific food, walking on the beach and not doing a thing. Oh, it was so good. So good. But we are so happy to be back with you guys. Uh, life just isn't the same when you're not doing it with your family. And so we, uh, we're glad to be back. And I want to, before we get into the message, I want to uh, take a moment and... Because I think this, I think the Holy Spirit was moving during that time of worship, and I, um, and so I want you, and I, I want us to lean back into that 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 moment. And we're not going to have the music going; it's going to be more silent, a little more intimate, a little more silent. And so I want you guys to get comfortable, get a good posture, feet flat on the floor. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to imagine that Jesus is standing before you. What is he saying? What is he doing? What does he look like? Is there anything that you want to say to Jesus? welcoming us into your presence. We are here. We are yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you guys to open up to Ephesians chapter 6. continuing our series on the armor of God. Because I don't know about you guys, but going through Ephesians, I've learned so much. And when we were starting to get to the end, we didn't quite want it to end. And so as in time of prayers, we having to, having conversations, it was, yeah, we could go over, we could do an overview of the armor of God, or we could sit in it for a little while. But if you've been around church for a long time, you you know about the armor of God. You heard you've you've heard a bunch about the armor of God. It's it's kind of this famous passage of scripture. And if and if you're new to church, if you're new to the Bible, you're like I don't I've heard of it maybe, or maybe I have no idea what it is. But it's an important passage, and I think it's important that we spend time here, especially because we want to because we're diving into Ephesians, we're diving into uh, the text. We wanna we wanna take make sure that we're that we're we're reading what's there. So last week, DJ, Pastor DJ, talked about the belt of truth. But he also made a, 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 a good point to talk about the main issue, the battle that we are having, the war that we are at. But I am going to read from the same passage that he read from. Je uh, Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10, it says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, 
put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And that's where we will stop tonight. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Jesus, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all that we can get out of it. Thank you for calling us deeper into who you are, who we are. Thank you, Jesus. May every word I speak tonight be forgotten. And every word you speak tonight be remembered. Thank you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we've walked through Ephesians, we've learned a couple things. We've, we, we talked about how the first three chapters really want to hammer home this idea of who we are. It says, okay, you have said yes to Jesus, and now, congratulations, this is who you are. Here are the benefits. Here's the joy. You are a child of God. All it takes is saying yes to Jesus. And then as we get to chapter 4, 5, and 6, we begin to see, okay, now that you've said yes, now that you are a part of this family, you are in this new household, there's, here's a few ways in which you can live according to this new family that you're in, right? Every family has its own values, its own, like, rules at the dinner table, so to speak. It's like, all right, hey, now we've got to learn kind of this new family that we're in. And so he's, and so he's, and a lot of the things that he's teaching us is how to do community well, how to, how to do this life together and how it's so important that we have one another and that we're good at doing community. In Ephesians 6, we learn not only are we children of God, not only have we been invited into his family, but now we learn that we are at war. We're, that, that, well, there is a battle going on and we've been caught in the crossfire. Whether or not we belong to God's household, the enemy is on the move and we are under attack. And the New Testament identifies our enemy as this figure, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, whatever name you want to call him and his army of demons. And so time and time again, you'll hear the New Testament authors talking about the enemy in this way. And DJ pointed out last week, right, he doesn't, th this isn't a one-man show, but it's the rulers, these authorities, these powers, these spiritual forces of evil that are all working together. These evil beings, these evil forces, evil powers that are working to, to take us down. And why? Why are they doing this? There's a battle going on. The author talks about, uh, the author is talking about, um, Hold on, did I skip a thing? I think I skipped something. We're going to go back a little bit. Sorry, you know, a little out of practice, two weeks, haven't preached. <laughs> Try to whew, get the rust off a little bit. They're evil beings that are working to attack us. But we've, we've learned already, Paul has already addressed at, at, in, in Ephesians already that, that Jesus is over these things, that Jesus has defeated these things. Right, in, in, in chapter 1, verse 21, he talks about how Christ is over the authorities of this realm. He talks about in, in, three, uh, in chapter 3 of Ephesians, verse 10, he talks about how we are to, the church is, is you know, the manifold wisdom of God is to be presented to the, uh, the, uh, the rulers of this world, right? So these things are already, there's already a fight going on, and Jesus is kind of already over these things. And in and, and Matthew 16, Jesus tells us that, or 16 or 18, I'm so sorry, Rusty. Jesus is, is clear. He says, hey, the, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We know that the church wins in the end, but individually we can fall. We've already seen much of Ephesians, right, is directed at us doing life together. Because there's a battle going on and we're going to need our brothers and sisters to stand with us when we're in these fights. And as the author talks about warfare, he talks about battles, he talks about armors, the, the original readers, the Ephesians, the people of Ephesus were, were, are going to think of the Roman military. And the Roman military, right, they were the, this was the army that conquered the Mediterranean that went deep into Africa, that went all the way up into, uh, into Britain. Like they were, they were all over the place. It was this dominant military force. 
and, and his historians were saying, man, as long as the Ephesian, as long, as long as the Roman legions, as long as they were equipped, and as long as they stood in their formation, they were virtually invincible. As long as they stood together, as long as they were had the had equipment, they were virtually invincible. And for some reason, when I was thinking about this, you know, the little nerd that I am, I was thinking of the art of war, written in the fifth century by a guy named Sun Tzu. And it's this, I don't even know why I know about this, but it's this, he's this, he's this Chinese guy that wrote this treatise on warfare. And it was written in the fifth century, and yet it is still, in, it, it, the, its influence is still seen in both Eastern military strategy and Western military strategy. It's full of tons of wisdom and insight about warfare. And one of the things he writes about warfare, he says, all warfare is based on deception. Hence, when we are able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe that we are far away. When far away, we must make him believe that we are near. And one of the most terrifying truths about this enemy that we face is that he's been fighting battles a lot longer than this guy. He knows the secrets of warfare. He knows to attack when we least expect it. He knows strategy. And so we need to be ready. We need to be prepared for when we are under attack. He knows deception because he is the father of lies. And so I'm going to use the same three points the pastor DJ used last week. And you're going to be hearing them a lot probably over the next few weeks. And that is we are going to be strong. We are going to put on. And we're going to stand firm. And so the, 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 the joy and much of this comfort of this passage happens right away in verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty strength. You know what that means? That means you're not fighting on your own. That means you're not having to rely on our own strength. We're not, we're not, we're not doing this on our own. We have, if we have no one else with us, we have God with us. While we remain in the Lord, we are in his mighty strength. We do not fight this battle alone. But we're talking about righteousness, right? We're talking about the breastplate of righteousness tonight. So how does, how, what is strength and righteousness, what do they have to do with one another? Well, as we talk about the breastplate of righteousness, we should probably understand what righteousness is. And the most basic layman's version of righteous definition I can give you is it, it is righteousness is right standing with God. Right? When someone asks you, hey, are you, how are you and the big man? Are you guys good? Yeah, we're good. How, how, like, are you guys, are you guys, you know, are you guys in good standing? Are, are you guys fighting right now? Are you guys arguing? Like, where are you at? What, what's your standing with God? Romans 3 Starting at verse 21, he says this. Paul, Paul writes uh, in a letter to the Romans, he writes this. He says, but now, apart from the law, uh, the righteousness of God has been made known. To which the law and the prophets testify, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. And so now we start getting this picture, right? You know, as, as Paul is writing about righteousness, he goes, Previously, there was this understanding that as long as we followed all the rules, as long as we did everything that the law, the first five books of the Bible said we are to do, then we are righteous. As long as we acted and behaved a certain way, we were righteous. And Paul is saying that is no longer the case. Because now righteousness has been shown through us in a new path. It's been th shown to us in Jesus. And now that, that now all that it takes, now it takes faith now the requirements for righteousness is just faith. Previously, ri righteousness had been a legalistic system, but now it comes through faith in Jesus. And in this passage, he continues on. It continues on in uh, Romans chapter 3. He says, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. 
And if we skip ahead a little, it, it talks about God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to, re, to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. It is our faith that gives us righteousness. When God looks at us, he does not see our screw-ups. He does not see where we had fallen short. He sees the glory of the sacrifice. He sees the atoning blood of Jesus. He sees self-sacrificial. He sees his son when he looks at us. Righteousness. We can be strong in the Lord because the Lord calls us, because Jesus calls us righteous. We can be strong in the Lord because he sees us as righteous. But I want to talk about two different, two different types of righteousness at play. Two different types. The first type I'm going to call positional righteousness. Where the, our faith in Jesus is what makes us righteous. Because as soon as we say yes, because now that we are children of God, right, this is back to Ephesians 1, 2, and 3. One of the, our standing with God, because of our position as children in his household, we are called righteous. Our right standing is not based upon primarily our behavior, but on how, where we stand with God. And we, as his children, we take on his family name, and his family name carries with it a righteousness attached to it. We are in right standing with God because of Jesus. Positional righteousness. Philippians 3, 7 through 9 says this, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider lost for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. We can be strong in the Lord because Jesus has made things right between us and God. But now we get this second point, right? It says you can be strong in the Lord and it says put on the full armor of God. So now there's... There's this action or kind of put on the chest, the, 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 the breastplate of righteousness. So we have this positional righteousness, but there is another kind of righteousness, a righteousness that, that requires us to put on. And there's, there's an action required. Romans 3, if we continue on from where we left off, it's, it starts talking about, hey, like, because now we have we have righteousness through faith. Where's the boasting? Why shall we keep boasting? Because we didn't earn this righteousness. It came from God. It came from Jesus. And he goes on and he says, hey, should we nullify the law because that no longer grants us righteousness? He goes, no. He goes, no, because we are all, he said, God is for the Jews. God is for the Gentiles. God is over all and God has justified us. So no, we don't nullify the law. In fact, we rather, we should uphold the law because we are righteous. We don't need to uphold the law to be righteous. We do it because we are righteous. And so not only is there this positional faith, there's also this practical faith. Sorry, not only is there positional righteousness, there's also this sense, this action, this, this practical righteousness. It's the action of putting on the armor. It's the action. It's, it's living within righteousness. We already are righteous people, but now he's asking us to live righteous lives. The reason why we do this is because we can avoid so many battles simply by living righteously. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, you know if, if the Bible, where we see in the Bible time and time again, it talks again, you know, one of the things it talks about is drunkenness, right? Uh, drunkenness leads to debauchery, like don't, don't get drunk. Don't get drunk on wine. It's like, okay, cool. Well, if I put myself in a position where let's say I go to a party that I know there's going to be drinking 
and my friends are going to be drinking, and they're going to want me to drink, have I set myself up for success? I have not. I know this is a bad position to be in. I know I shouldn't be doing this action. So you know what? If I live righteously and I set a boundary way ahead of time, I don't have to fight that battle. I can fight it from way back here. You know, another thing in the Bible, right, we, t- we, we see this beautiful picture of, of sex within covenantal relationship. Within the, within the context of marriage, sex is this beautiful, beautiful thing. And so he warns us, hey, hey do, not, do not diminish sex. Don't take it outside of the context for which it was designed. And so it's like, okay, like let's, you know, oh man, you know, let's say you and your, your significant other, we decide, hey, we're not going to have sex until marriage. That's a great thing. But as soon as you end up back at your apartment after a date, just the two of you, you have not set yourself up for success. You're now at battle where you didn't need to be at battle. You, know, you go into the bedroom, you, you, you know, you start like dimming the light. You are setting yourself up for failure. You're entering into a battle where you didn't even know that you didn't even need to go to battle. Live righteously. We open ourselves up for attacks, even even here in the church. If I, if I got a problem with someone over here, and then I start going over to someone here, and I start, man, I got a problem with this person. Oh, yeah, no, I got a problem with that person too. And all of a sudden, I, I never go to the person that, that I have the issue with. We never resolve it, and now, I've, now I have a resentment. This person has a resentment, and, we just, and now all of a sudden there's division in the church. Now all of a sudden we're, we're splitting, we're fracturing because, because people aren't talking to one another, they have issues with one another. We've given the devil a foothold in our very family. What, this is why the Bible talks against gossip. Because it creates division. It gives the devil a foothold in our family when we should be fighting him. And now we have to fight these battles internally that we shouldn't even have to fight those battles if we're living righteously. Living righteously, setting these boundaries can help us avoid battles. But some battles are going to come whether or not we, you know, some battles are going to come no matter what. There's also going to be battles that we have to fight that, that are going to, you know, no matter how much we boundary, no matter how, no, there's going to be temptations that come. There's going to be attacks that come no matter what. And living righteously can help fortify us against those attacks. When our daily life, when our daily practice is one of righteous living, when those attacks come at us, even when we've set all these boundaries, we're going to be fortified for that fight. And the reason, right, we, we have righteousness associated with this, this breastplate. And the breastplate covers the chest. It covers, it covers the, the, all the major vital organs. It, co- it covers even the heart. And it's, it's by no mistake that, 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 that righteousness has been coupled with this thing that guards the center of our being. Because righteousness protects our heart. It protects our soul. The center of who we are, Proverbs 4, 23 says, above all else, guard your heart. Because everything you do flows out of it. Everything we do flows out of our heart, out of our soul. Following your heart only works if you've been protecting it. Otherwise, your heart will lead you back to the very things that hurt it in the first place. Are you guarding your heart? Do you live righteously so that you can protect yourself? Put on righteousness. Guard your heart. Because the enemy is going to come after our purity. It's going to come after our, our, our confidence in how God sees. It's going to come after our very identity. Because when, when we feel like we can't... What, Sometimes when we, when we sin, and we sin, maybe, maybe it's a thing that happens over and over and over again. And we go, man, I can't keep going back to God with this. I can't pray every time I do it because God's getting tired of hearing my thing. When we fail to set these boundaries and we engage in sin, now all of a sudden we begin, now, now the truth aspect comes back into play because we go, oh, man, God's, oh, God's going to be so disappointed with me this time. And when we don't, do, when we don't guard our lives, we let these, these, this, the, these lies and this deceit into our lives. And we, for, we, we, we start to lose even our grasp on the heart of the Father. You know, when I, when I close my eyes and I picture Jesus, I can't help but see 
I can't help but see that father running down the road to the prodigal son. You know, I, I don't see Jesus standing and waiting for me to come. I see him running after me. And if we lose that sense, if we lose the fact that we are in right standing with God, if we lose the fact that we can come to God no matter what, no matter what time of day, no matter where we're at, no matter what we've been doing, and he's still going to love us, and he's still going to accept us, and he's still going to care for us like a father. If we start to lose that image of God in our heads, we're, then the enemy begins to win. He's coming after us. The enemy is coming after us, but so is the Father. Can I show you something I thought was really cool? It's in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59, starting at verse 15. It says, the Lord looked and was displeased. He saw that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm achieved salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. Verse 17, Isaiah 59, verse 17 says, He put on righteousness as his breastplate, the helmet of salvation on his head. Isn't that cool? That we are to arm ourselves with, with the very armaments of God. That when we go into battle, we're to look like God. We're to wear the same stuff that God defends us with. God fights for us with his righteousness. So he says, arm yourselves with righteousness. We're going to go to battle looking like an organized military. We're all going to wear the same qualities. Because even because if the, if the armor is good enough for God, it's good enough for me. God himself wears the breastplate of righteousness when he goes to battle on our behalf. So we are too to put on the breastplate of righteousness so that we can stand firm. Worship team, you guys can come back up. God made us righteous. It wasn't anything we did. We just said yes to Jesus, and Jesus said, you're righteous. You are in right standing with the Father. And because of that, we, we pursue this life of righteousness. We start to look at what the Bible says, and we try to do what the Bible says. And that helps us stand firm in our identity. Because the enemy wins as soon as we forget where we're standing with God. When we fail to live within our righteousness, it becomes increasingly difficult to believe that God calls us righteous. We talk ourselves out of our own standing with God. And if we lose sight on that, if we lose sight on who God calls us to be, we begin to indulge all the things he says we're not. We begin to start listening to the lies that he's already called out in our lives. We begin to start listening to those things because we lose grip. That's why we need to stand together. That's why we need brothers and sisters in our corners. A soldier on their own against the attack of an enemy has a chance. But with a soldier on either side of them, with a brother or sister in Christ on either side of them, guarding their rear, guarding their, their flanks, that's hard to beat. We need to be strong in the Lord who gives us our righteousness. We need to put our righteousness, we need to put on righteousness to guard, to guard our hearts so that we can stand firm in who God calls us to be. Sun Tzu writes, victorious warriors win and then go to war. While defeated warriors go to war first and seek to win. I have some good news for you guys tonight. Our God's already won. Christ already reigns. The, the enemy knows he's defeated. And he, all he's doing is lashing out, trying to bring as many of us down with him as possible. 
because he sees us. He sees that we are loved of God. He sees that we were made in the image of God. And he knows that God has defeated him. And so he wants to take as many of us down with him. Because he's already lost. We are not fighting from a place. We don't, it's not like we don't know what's going to happen. We know the church will prevail. We know that Jesus reigns. We know that all things are being brought underneath his feet. We are victorious warriors who have already won. We've already won the war. We don't have to fear evil. For God, the victor, has given us all we need to be strong, to stand firm. That's to put on righteousness. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your victory. We thank you for the identity you gave us. We thank you for the title of righteous. Thank you for your work on the cross. That through faith, we can say that we're in right standing with God. Where God can look at us and see, yep, their debt's been paid. They're all right with me. Thank you, Lord, for arming us with righteousness, with giving us the tools to live the life you've called us to live, to live a better life, life and life abundantly, as you've so called it. Help us as we learn to walk this way together, as we learn to, learn to walk the way of Jesus, walk at the pace of Jesus, and do this together as a family as your body. Thank you, Jesus. For those in this room tonight that you are going, man, I've been slack and I, I thought the enemy was far away and I've fallen for his traps too many times. And it's all right. And you're, there's going to be other times again where you fall into his traps. But if you're saying, man, I, 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 need, I need his righteousness. I need to put on this breastplate of righteousness. I need to guard my heart more. You say, man, I, I, I want to I step into this family. I need people on my left and right guiding me. If that's you, you want to raise your hand tonight? Thank you, 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 thank you. You guys put your hands down. And maybe you're in this room and you've never said yes to Jesus before and you're hearing, man, there's, there's a war going on over me. And I want to submit my life to Jesus, the one who made a way where I, where I, can, I can live with him forever, the one that loves me, the one that's running toward me. I feel like I've been running away from him. And you, if, if that's you tonight and you want to turn back and you want to say yes to Jesus, maybe again or maybe for the very first time, I want you to raise your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So Jesus, we give our lives to you. We submit to the teaching of your word. We submit to all that you've called us. We say yes to the, uh, the, the title of child of God. We say yes to your name. We say yes to the title of righteous. So help us put on the armor of God. Help us put on this breastplate of righteousness. Help me guard my heart. Surround us with people that will help us, that will help protect us, that will stand with us when the enemy attacks. May I stay forever within the wings of my Father, Jesus. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up as we worship together. We're going to have the prayer team up front. If you respond and you want to pray with someone, they'll be up here. Or if you just want to talk, they'd love to talk to you as well. But we're going to go back into time of worship.
much your love, but you give us other people who we can grow with, who we can love, who we can form relationships with, Lord. I thank you for the fact that you cover us. You give us the breastplate of righteousness, Lord, that allows us to be in right relationship with you, that because we have you, we go into the battle victorious. We don't go into the battle looking for victory. We already have the victory, God. I pray for everyone in this space who just accepted you into their heart, who understood and accepted the idea of community. We need people, God. I pray that you would begin to show them ways that they can connect to people, begin to show them ways that they can connect to you, God. I thank you for your spirit that is so evidently here, Lord. Would you just bless the people here? Help them to have a wonderful, amazing week that as they leave this room, they would feel confident knowing that they have encountered you, knowing that you have a plan, you have a purpose for them, and that they walk into that plan confidently, victorious, knowing that you have already won the battle, God. I thank you for who you are. You are so good. In your name we pray. Alrighty, guys. Well, what a wonderful night it has been. But I do want to make you all aware, um, for those of you who don't know, we do have small groups that run here at People's Church in Awakening specifically. Your peers, people here run them. They are wonderful. For those of you who raised your hand saying, like, I want to step in. I want to be a part of a community. I want that faith family a lot of what Paul talks about is unity within the church body. And small groups are a great way to get unified, get around people your age, and just get connected. So if you guys want to sign up for small groups, you can do so using the link in our bio, uh, awakening underscore Fresno on Instagram. I highly encourage you guys to do that. Get plugged into the small groups. The small group leaders have such a big heart for you guys. I feel like I need to start singing because it's so weird for there to be nothing back here for me. But you can also, um, not. <laughs> I was not meaning to attack you, I'm sorry. Uh, but you guys can also scan the QR code at the info table if you want to sign up for small groups. Or you can use the QR code, or you can use the link that is in our bio. So that is how you can sign up. But also, you have an opportunity tonight, and that opportunity includes ice cream. So if you guys want to be a part, if you want to get to know more people here, head to Ampersand. We're going to be leaving in about 30 minutes. I know that's late, but we're young. We can handle it. I believe in us. We go to the one that is on, what is that, Willow and Shepherd? Yes. I'm learning. I've lived here my whole life. Still don't even know the city. Willow and Shepherd. We're going to the Ampersand there. So make sure that you come. Make sure you sign up for small groups. But other than that, we love you. Thank you so much for being here. We will see you all next week. And next week is basketball. So bye.